Hi, I'm Christine Cushing, and I'm so happy to be spending a little more time with you again together in the quarantine kitchen. We're together, but we're apart. That's the beauty of this thing. And this is my special series of simple recipes, feel good, because we all need to feel good right now, that I know you can easily make, no stress, but still, you know, keeping the technique proper because I'm all about that. So today I want to take you on a little bread journey. We actually haven't done a bread together and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. I'm going to make for you a no need focaccia. So for me, while I start making it, I just want to tell you why I love bread so much. And I think everybody's starting to come on board with that. There's something about bread that's beyond feel good. It really is magical. It always has been to me. So let's start with this. There's a few very interesting techniques with this bread because time does all the work. You are actually not going to have to need this at all. So in my bowl, I don't need anything mechanized. Just have my flour in the bowl here. I've blended a couple of different types of flour here. If you're going to do that, I would say two parts white flour to one part whole wheat. I wouldn't go any more than that in terms of the whole wheat because you do want that fluffiness and that rise that the white flour is going to give us. It's either going to be an all-purpose flour, unbleached always, or a bread flour. You don't want to use a soft, anything softer than all-purpose. So flour in here, and I'm using uh, yeast, and I'm actually using instant yeast. So I mix the yeast with the flour right away and just make sure that I stir that together. Now the deal with instant yeast is that instant yeast has about 25% more oomph or yeastability, let's say, to rise bread. So you use a very little amount. By the way, this whole recipe is going to be below the video description, so I'm not going to bog you down with quantities right now because it's really all about the technique and us hanging out together. So yeast is always going to be separate from the salt. You never want to mix those two together because on contact, the salt can kill the yeast. So now I have my dry ingredients. Here, I'm just going to mix some water, any temperature, doesn't matter, with a little bit of honey. And that's going to be essentially the food for the yeast to get the yeast starting to go. Blended together. And I'm going to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Whatever you have in your pantry, really, I mean, this is what we're talking about here. Whatever you have in your pantry, you can go ahead and use it. But the magic of a focaccia is really in just the simplicity of it. So olive oil, I mean, I really want to talk a whole lot with you about olive oil, but that's not going to be now at another time. Once we get over this hump, we can have some good olive oil conversation because olive oil has beautiful flavor, fragrance. That's what gives this flatbread or this focaccia its amazing flavor. You don't want to use a, a olive oil that's rancid or old because it's really going to affect the flavor. So wet is going to come in to meet the dry and I'm just using a wooden spoon or a spatula here, nothing else. Okay, that's going in and I'm going to switch to a bigger spatula and just go around my bowl just to not even create a dough that looks like anything essentially, but just for the flour to absorb the liquid. That's all I'm trying to do here. Now you notice that I haven't added my salt yet. The salt I tend to add just at this point. So I am going to do that now. And I'm sprinkling it on top. So this is a little protection so that you don't add the salt directly to the yeast. At this point the yeast is already blended with the other ingredients. So it's much more safe this way. Okay. I'm going to keep coming around here, just making sure that the salt is all blended. I'm going to go in with the last bit with my hands just to make sure that the salt is blended and taking the flour from the bottom. But again, this is not kneading, it's just mixing it together, you'll see. I just don't want to have any salt kind of lingering here. And this is a perfect bread to make as a beginner because 
The no need method is really, really simple. You're, as it says, no needing necessary. Okay, I'm just gonna wash, wash my hands. Keep looking at that bread, it looks so good, that dough. Now the magic, and it really is magic at this point, is I'm gonna leave this, I'm not gonna do anything else to it. The only thing I'm gonna do is transfer it to a bowl here with a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. And that is gonna sit ideally overnight. So why do I wanna have this sit? And it's gonna sit in the fridge overnight. So overnight, here's what happens. You notice I didn't need it, right? How do you develop gluten? That's what makes bread hold the air pockets when it rises in the oven and gives it the chew. What makes that? It's two things. It's muscle, machine, hand, where you actually knead the dough and then you do that, that window pane and you can actually hold the structure, or time. And this is the one we're gonna opt for because we do have a lot of time now, right? In other times, Everyone's like, I don't have any time. Now we have way too much time. So you can make this bread without actually doing any of the work. And it's a good bread to start with because it gives you the idea of what happens. It starts to introduce you to the magic of all that really flour, water, a little olive oil and some yeast can do. So covering that, and that's gonna go in the fridge overnight. Okay, I wanna make sure that I cover it completely, and of course now my paper is not sticking, but you want to make sure, let's see if it works the other way, honestly. Yeah, look at that, it's got a side that it likes. So I want to make sure I seal this, and that's going to go in the fridge overnight, I'm not going to touch it, do anything. So check out what happens after that. You're going to be blown away, I predict. Okay, are you ready? Look at this baby. Look at the beauty. Have a look at that and tell me you don't want to make this right now. Look at those bubbles. Look at that. Look at the lightness of that. Now, what I don't want to do is do the punch. No, 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 no. I don't even want to get, I don't even want to talk too loudly, which is a problem for me because I am loud. I've been, <laughs> been told that even when I'm whispering, I can't even whisper and I'm not loud. I, I don't know why that is. It must be my voice. I'm going to just <laughs> take that. So, okay, I'm just loud. What can I tell you? Um, but what is happening here now is these bubbles have been created overnight. What a lot of people do is pound that down. You don't want to do that at all. That's the airiness and the lightness and the beauty of this that's going to capture and that has captured all of those air bubbles. So I'm just going to take a baking sheet because this is going to be baked or, or spread out on that. The one thing that I did do to this after I took it out of the fridge is I did what's called a turn. So I'm going to show you where you actually just take your hand and put it into the bowl and lift the dough up. You do that on all four corners. You can see how it's sort of stretched. Kind of put your hand in, lift it and fold it over. Do a quarter turn, put your hand in, lift it and fold it over. Same thing, you do that four times and that gives it that little stretch. You see that there? That's just gonna help develop a little bit of structure. Now going in with the olive oil directly on my baking pan, just like that. And then with a little bit of luck, now I want to make sure that I have olive oil everywhere. I'm going to just spread this out. Sometimes what I like to do just for extra precaution is I put a little parchment paper on this baking sheet. That just helps you release the dough after. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. <laughs> if this doesn't make you happy, I don't know. Even at a time like this. You see all that beautiful air captured in there? I don't wanna flatten that down at all. 
I'm being as delicate as I can. Okay. Oh. Now, I'm using my fingertips and very gently, I'm going to pull this apart. Not, I'm, I'm really looking at this like a balloon filled with water, not even air. Just very, very delicately, I'm moving this around. And the olive oil helps me in the bottom of this baking sheet. It really helps to move it around. Okay, I'm going to do that. And then if you want to just pull it a little bit more, just get underneath it. Again, just gently like that. It doesn't have to be a perfect shape. What you're looking for is a, a kind of an even thickness, right? You don't want it to be too thick and too thin so that it cooks evenly throughout. And then, again, you spread it out a little bit more and you just kind of play around with it like that. You'll see if it's resisting, you just let it sit for a couple of minutes and come back to it. But right now it's feeling really, really good. But again, just imagine it as a balloon filled with water. See those bubbles? Fantastic. So I'm going to let it just rest for a couple of minutes while I prepare. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm going to top this with very classically a little bit of rosemary. Okay, so here we go. Look at my rosemary. It's looking not so great, right? You might have that same situation right now. But not to worry. It got a little bit wilted in the fridge and it really wasn't that great to begin with. So, but this is not going to make any difference in terms of what I'm using it for. I'm just taking the big stem off. I don't mind the, the little stems, but the big stems I'm taking off because it's going to be too woody. And I want to leave some big pieces and I'm going to chop some. Okay, so let me again wipe my hands here. So some of it I'm chopping finely and some of it I'm going to leave in bigger pieces like that so you so it's more visible. And the only other thing that's going to go on top is I'm using some sea salt beautiful flakes. This is Malden, but you can use any kind of cell, fleur de sel. You don't want to use a table salt because it's very, very harsh. So any kind of a good quality finishing salt. Again, don't rush out and buy it, but I'm just saying if you don't have a quality finishing salt, I wouldn't put salt on top because it's going to be very, very harsh. So just in those couple of minutes, it's going to give me the opportunity to pull a little bit more and get to the right shape that I want. You can see how forgiving it is, right? It's just allowing me to move this around. Look at that. And I don't need to be too concerned about it being a perfect rectangle here, right? I'd rather it be an unusual shape and have these holes than not. Okay, so that's looking like that. I'm going to now give it the quintessential dimpling. Get my fingers right in there. like that. Oh, look at that big bubble. Bubbles all around. Again, I'm being gentle, but firm, if that makes any sense. Just to maintain those bubbles. Being delicate and making sure my hands are dipped in olive oil. Right? Let's just go the full thing like that. Okay, now, because we didn't have enough olive oil, it's going to have a little bit more olive oil. We want to fill those little dimples. This is not the time to be stingy. This is the feel-good time. Unless you don't have olive oil, then you do what you have, basically. But I don't like it to be swimming. I do put enough in there, but I don't want it to be totally swimming with olive oil. Okay, now, a little bit of the rosemary, the finely chopped rosemary. Like that. It seems like a lot, but really this is going to puff up and it's going to give us fragrance. And then those bigger pieces that are going to have a nice look on the finished product. 
oh, the flavor. Something about rosemary, olive oil, and the dough smell is just crazy. That's all I can tell you. And the last thing, well, a couple of last things. I never put my hands in the vessel for salt. I always put them in my hand. So here comes the Malden salt. Just sprinkling feathers on top, not too, too much, because we don't want it to be crazy salty, but that is the quintessential flavor of the focaccia that comes from Liguria in Italy. Okay, that is great. And the last thing that I do really to create a bit of steam in the oven is just a little bit of water. I'm almost kind of splashing it with a little bit of water. And because again, we have so much time, what, what I want to do with this now is I like to leave it out kind of at room temperature to do a final proof for about an hour. What's going to happen again is it's going to puff up a little bit more before it's time to bake. And that's going to give us a great flavor and that beautiful texture. Bubbles. Okay, you want to see what it looks like? Because I can smell it. I've got one in the oven. Are you ready? Look at what I'm talking about. Whoa. Look at that, look at that. Hot. Huh? Look at this. Hello. Two words. Mama, look at this. Now it is a little bit puffy in the center, but again, I'm not sweating that. What I want to show you is how does this look inside and the texture that it has. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to slice a little bit. It is pretty hot, but I want to slice it because I want you to hear that crunch. Oh. And the air pockets. That's what I'm talking about. I can't even describe to you this aroma. It's ridiculous. Look at this. So that's what we're looking for. Crunchy top, beautiful salty crispiness, those amazing gorgeous air pockets that's trapped the air. And boy, I think you're gonna absolutely love this baby. Right? Our, is it, did it deliver what we, what we talked about? It's still pretty hot, so I'm going to try and maybe take off a corner because, oh, the crunch on it. Look at that. So you want to really ensure, okay, that's, that's really nuts. The magic, remember I told you about the magic of the bread? That's what it is. Beautiful crispiness, a little bit of that amazing olive oil just kind of dripping down, still pretty hot, but. That's just, that's magic, is all I can say. It's really magic. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of vacillating. Today I'm still in my feel good, you know, which is why I wanted to make this for you. This is bread for me, it's feel good. I don't know, next week I might be in panic mode and maybe we have to cook something else. But right now, it still feel good. Oh, this is so, so good. Thank you for spending some time with me again in the quarantine kitchen. I hope things are going well for you. Again, we're trying to really 
keep it together and, and get over the hump, all of us in, in our kitchen, spending some time together. Thank you. Please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what's happening in your kitchen. And thank you again. See you next time.